When you have a navigation bar that's made up of different images and you want to hyperlink those images so that when a user comes and hovers over that image and clicks on it, it acts as a link that goes to another page. It's quite simple to do in Dreamweaver. As soon as you put in an image in, in Dreamweaver, and I'll just give you an example by clicking on this home image that I've inserted here, down here in the properties inspector for that image, I see lots of different things. For instance, the, uh, the width and the height. Uh, the source, meaning the actual file that has been used for the image. And one text box here that's blank, that doesn't show anything at the moment, is the link. So this is where I want to put in a hyperlink that points to another file or another web address somewhere else so that when the user clicks on that link or that, uh, that image, it goes to this other file. Now, in this example here, I'm currently looking at home. I've got the home button selected. So this is for my index.html file. It's for the main entry page into my whole website. So I want to link this image to that file. And there's two options here. Well, actually, there's three. One option is to actually type in the, uh, the file name here in the text box. Another option is to use this icon here, which is the point to file which I'll use in a minute. And the third option is to browse for the file using a, a, a browse dialog box. Now, this is my home page that I'm creating at the moment. I've got the file saved as index.html. So this file already exists. I'm going to use the point to file icon to show you how to use it. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to move over here to my files panel and I'm going to point at index.html to say that this hyperlink, when it gets clicked, I want you to go to index.html. And there it's done. That image is now hyperlinked. And I can see it's put in the file name into the link text box. So that's the home icon done. Now, if I click on the next image over, I see the tour image. The tour image is going to go to the tour web page in the site. Now, in actual fact, I'm still only working on the, the home page, which is index.html. Tour.html doesn't exist yet, but I know already what I'm going to call it when I save that file. I'm going to save it as tour.html, all lowercase, all one word. And so, even though I've no file to point to using the point to file, or have no file to browse to uh, for the browse for file dialog box, I can still actually just type in the name of the file that I want this hyperlink to go to when somebody clicks on it. Even though it doesn't exist yet, I know it will, and I know it's going to be called tour.html. So I've typed in tour.html in the link text box, and that puts that link on that image, so that when the tour.html does exist, that will link up. And I'm going to continue on and do the same type of thing for all of the different images. So music eventually is going to link into a file called music.html. So that's the file name that I'm going to put into the link text box. And gallery <coughs> is going to go into the gallery.html page. And contact is going to go into the contact.html page. Now that each image on my navigation bar has a hyperlink on it pointing to the appropriate page, when I start resaving this file over and over again uh, to roll it out for all the different pages in my website, all of those links should link up and everything should work. Now there's one more thing that I need to talk about and that is here you can see in the design view that these blue borders have cropped up around my images and it's a little bit unsightly, it's not really what I had in mind for my design so I need to get rid of them. Now this is kind of a, a grey area because if I click into live view here to get a, an idea of what this page is going to look like in a browser I can see that those borders disappear and also if I try and have a look at it in some of my browsers for instance in Google Chrome, I'll do a preview on that, save everything um, and that's what it looks like. So I can see that there's no borders there. That's okay. Let's have a look at it in Safari. 
same situation, no borders there, no problem. The only problem is, is that some of the browsers, for instance, Firefox, and this is that web page in Firefox, it does have those blue borders around it. So it's not a, a standard interpretation by all the browsers about what should happen when you put a hyperlink around a particular image. Sometimes we get this blue border around it and we need to make sure that that doesn't happen on any browser. So I'm going to go back into Dreamweaver here and let's uh, think about how we're going to solve this. I'll click off Live View and I see those blue borders again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a rule on one of these particular images. So I'm going to click that image here and I'm going to go over to my CSS Styles panel and I'm going to click on my new CSS rule icon, the one with the little plus on it. And let's see what comes up on the new CSS rule dialog box. It's already suggesting the name for the selector, the actual naming of this. Uh, it's put this drop down option here to compound. And if I go down here to the selector name, I can see that it's been very, very specific. It's saying that in an ID of wrapper, in an ID of navbar, when an image is hyperlinked, so when there's an anchor tag and there's an image acting as an anchor tag, that whatever rule that I put on this, it will apply to only images in that situation. So it will only apply to images that are acting as a hyperlink that are in the navbar div section that is also in the wrapper div section. So you're being extremely, extremely tight and focused in saying that this rule will only apply in this situation, which is good because I'm going to have lots of different images in the content part of my web page, and I don't want this rule possibly to apply to all of those. So if I'm happy with this selector, I can go ahead and click OK. If I feel that this is too narrow and focused, or I feel it's a little bit confusing, I can get in here and edit away some of these different parts of that compound selector. But I'm happy with it for the moment. It's OK, so I'm going to click OK there. Now, the main thing here is in the categories border. So this border category, I'm going to go into the style, and I'm going to drop that down and click on None. And I'm going to apply that and click OK. Hasn't updated yet quite in my uh, design view of my Dreamweaver, but let me just click my live view here, see that it goes back there. If I click off the live view, yes, I can see that the design view has finally caught up with this rule, and I can see that there's no border there. So let's go through the same process again and check this web page in one of the main culprits that was showing up these browser, browser uh, these borders on my images, which was Firefox. And so I'm just going to save everything, file, save all, and I'm going to go back into Firefox and press refresh, and I can see that there's no borders there. And that's that rule acting. And so that we're all good. And that's how to hyperlink images in a navigation bar in Dreamweaver.